Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the program Business Time, a magazine program in which we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. My name is William Kumwembe. In the program today, we look at the maize situation in the country as many Malawians continue to face hunger. And also in the program, ESCOM requires 30 million US dollars to rectify damaged infrastructure. That's inside Business Time. Hello and welcome. This is Business Time and my name is William Kumwembe. In our main story in the program today, the country's strategic grain reserves have about 70,000 metric tons of maize, which of course experts say is not enough to cushion Malawians from the elevated maize prices. Uh, this comes as the country continues to nest wounds brought about by the cyclone Freddy, which washed away many infrastructures affecting many sectors, including the agriculture sector. The question is, uh, is this enough to anchor food security for Malawi ahead of the harvest season for 2023 production season? Our journalist Chimwemwe Mangazi reports. According to the World Bank, Malawi's annual men's requirement is 3.1 million tons a year, translating to 258.3 tons monthly. This means the 70,000 metric tons of maize in the strategic grain reserves is enough to feed the whole country for eight days. Agriculture expert Leonard Chimaza says the amount is not enough for Malawi because currently the country requires over 350,000 metric tons a month. As a country, we uh, usually require over... Uh, 350,000 metric tons per month. That's the, the required quantities of, of maize. Now, uh, looking at the, the devastation that uh, we have experienced uh, because of the cyclone uh, Freddy, this country might need uh, to be uh, very strategic in as far as the uh, strategic grain reserves are concerned. We need to make sure that uh, we have replenished our uh, strategic grain reserves with enough uh, grain so that um, as a country we should be able to uh, come back uh, so that come back in the, uh, I should take that again. We should make sure that uh, we need to be very strategic in ensuring that the, uh, our strategic grain reserves have enough stock uh, so that we can be uh, fully secure as, as a country. Uh, from the look of things, uh, it, uh, based on uh, what the Minister of Agriculture did uh, uh, release uh, uh, during the time they were releasing the figures for the uh, first round crop estimate, it was very clear that uh, this country, uh, for the first estimate, uh, will register a reduction in the uh, maize yield for about 4.1%. Uh, uh, and that was uh, because of productivity issues that came with, into being because of the uh, challenges that were there in the affordable input program. Now, uh, first forward, we have these uh, other factors that will certainly necessitate a uh, further reduction in terms of yield. We, we have the productivity issues from the IP, and then we have um, issues surrounding the uh, cyclone credit. Uh, and also some cases of four MOMs. It must be also realized that um, uh, a month ago, we also had reports from Karonga that uh, we, we also had uh, over 10,000 hectares being subjected to drought. So these are key factors that would certainly necessitate food insecurity in this country. So the report that we have um, only 70,000 metric tons is uh, kind of worrisome. And uh, what it means is the government must expedite the process of replenishing the uh, strategic grain reserves. Above all, we need also to make sure that uh, we put in place uh, short-term uh, measures that will help this country uh, to be fully secure. But Acting Chief Executive Officer of the National Food Reserve Agency, David Kaputaloga, says plans are underway to replenish the strategic grain reserves. We still do have uh, a bit of reserves, uh, mostly from what was procured last time. And uh, the, the World Bank has also come in to support us <clears throat> as we're speaking. 
uh, there's been 65,000 metric tons that has just been procured uh, by the government using a facility that has been provided by the World Bank. So uh, as we're sitting, we could be saying we have about 70,000 uh, metric tons. Um, of course, some of it is already being drawn to be used for, for relief and uh, uh, price stabilization. But, but we do have we do have stock in the reserves. So in, in a nutshell, let, let me say we do have about 70,000 uh, metric tons uh, as a reserve. How, how long can uh, 70,000 last or how long can it take us? Uh, I'm asking this question considering the fact that uh, we're facing uh, an acute food shortage in the southern region and uh, some parts of the northern region which face drought recently. So how long can 70,000 take us? Right. So uh, it's not as straightforward as just saying so many months uh, because uh, as you're aware, uh, the devastation, the disaster has just happened and uh, the authorities are still doing the assessment. So I think we'll be advised as to how much DOTMA will require of that. Or, already we had been responding to the, the lean season uh, from November to March. Usually uh, this is uh, uh, described as the lean, lean season as we are awaiting the harvest. So already there are vulnerable families that uh, the government does support. And we started the operation in November. That was before the disaster that has fallen us. And uh, obviously the, the, the cyclone Freddy has made things a little bit uh, tricky. Uh, officially, we should have been finishing that lean season response uh, 31st of March. And uh, there's been a lot of maize that has been moved to that effect. This is coming at a time the government announced that 12 billion kwacha has been allocated for maize purchases in the 2023-2024 national budget. The amount can buy 480 metric tons of men's, considering the government set minimum price of the commodity of 500 kwacha per kilogram. Now, one of the sectors that was hardly hit by the Cyclone Freddy uh, is the energy sector, especially the supply side where pores and many other infrastructure were damaged. Now, Electricity Supply Corporation of Malawi, ESCOM, that's the state-run supply of electricity in the country, says it requires in excess of 30 million US dollars, that's about 30 billion kwacha, to rectify the damaged infrastructure. Kamkwamba Kumwenda is Chief Executive Officer for ESCOM and explains in this interview with our journalist, Chimwemwe Mangazi. Uh, in areas where we are able to access, uh, situations I think they are almost complete, but I think the challenge is the areas where the roads have been washed away. We haven't done an assessment. So from today, we've actually hired the helicopters from the Marad Defense Force. We will make an assessment between today and tomorrow to see the extent of the damage. The problem is that the, the damage is so extensive that we have to re redesign the route. In some, ways, in some cases, we have to change the designs. Uh, the biggest challenge is that in so doing, we will need to have new what we call well leaves, where the lines pass. Where they are heavier built, it means now we have to compensate. People are built there, people will need to move out. So we work hand-in-hand hand in hand with the Ministry of Lands to make sure that they give us the way lifts. Because the way our lines were, were passing through now, it means now it's, it's a river. But now we need to reroute, but it's a more complex problem because now we have to displace people, we have to compensate, we have to find funds to pay them to relocate, to build away from the way lifts. So that's the biggest challenge. But the, for areas where the lines are there, the poles were just down, we're almost done. But the challenge is where the lines were completely washed away and where the places are not accessible by road. Especially Mulanje, uh, Palombe, that side, and Lower Sire, the areas like those where roads are completely cut. So we just want to go and make an assessment, area assessment. We've used drones, we know what, what is there, but now we need to land and then physically see the extent of damage. And then, because in this case, then we need to uh, hire engineers to redesign. Because it's not just a issue of putting up poles. 
you need to design. You have a new design, what you call uh, build better. We don't want to just restore temporarily, but we want to change the design, build something that is going to last in case of other storms coming in the future. Uh, the total installation will cost about $30 million, which is about more than $30 billion. Uh, we give ourselves, it depends on how soon we get the funds, but uh, within maximum maybe six months, but minimum three months. If you get the funds today, then we'll do the next side, make sure that we restore power as soon as possible. Where, where do you intend to get such funds? We've uh, approached several donors. In fact, the World Bank and the other Matrato donors have actually requested us to make our budgets to submit to them the post where we need help. But you know, these things take time in terms of approvals. World Bank has its own structures, but we want to make sure that as ESCOM, we'll do things as quickly as possible. So yeah, we've been approached by World Bank and other uh, material, uh, donors to see if they can donate, not loans, but donate. So we've made those submissions. Now they are with the Minister of Finance. I think now they're busy working on those. So as soon as you, the funds are available, we'll be on the ground. A few of our transformers have been vandalized, the copper taken out. Those things need to be imported. And with the forex issue, it's a big challenge. We don't have enough transformers. So to replace a transformer, you talk of uh, between nine and 12 months to, to complete the procurement process. So it's choices that Marians are making, bad choices. Now we need, we need to take ownership of our infrastructure. These things are costly and they're expensive. In, in some cases, the conductors, the, the wires have been taken out. That's why we want to go make an area view, see if the equipment is there or it's been vandalized. Then uh, I think by the end of the week, we should be able to, ma to make a complete assessment of what we need. But in areas where we know that the most part of Mulanje, Parombe, there's no power, so people have taken advantage to vandalize the equipment which is unfortunate. Uh, as of now, as the OSCOM, we wanted to hire some helicopters from MDF, but let me thank the My Defense Force. Now they've come out say no, they will give us free of charge as a contribution towards this noble cause. So from today, the MDF has just given us helicopters for free to go and survey the area. We will go and land and then physically inspect the uh, affected areas. Initially, what we did was to, we were using drones but drones were not effective enough because it was just an area view. But now with the, the helicopters which have been given by the MDF will go, land and do a physical inspection. And after that, within a week, we should be able to make a complete assessment of what we need. And then that part of the assessment will give, be given to World Bank and other financiers to assist us with finances. This is Business Time, a magazine program in which we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. My name is William Kumwembe. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is Business Time, a magazine program in which we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. And my name is William Kumwembe. Moving on with the program, FDH Bank, which is one of the commercial banks listed on the Malawi Stock Exchange, has expressed optimism for continued business growth amid challenges facing the local economy. This was said in Blanta on Friday when the bank hosted its shareholders to an investor's forum. Among other things, the bank uh, reported a profit after tax of 22.9 billion quarter that's for the year ended december 31st 2022 uh, we caught up with fth bank managing director who is no Nkuliji, for an insight on how the bank fared in the year ended december 31st 2022 and what the future holds to uh, give the investors um, how we did in 2022 uh, the issues that uh, came up uh, in form of you know the, the issues of devaluation uh, the issues of uh, you know how we did um, um, in terms of you know performance, as well as you know the outlook going forward uh, in terms of uh, uh, what we intend to do. Like for example, we are going to introduce Islamic banking. Uh, we have already done the concepts. We have already gone to the central bank really to get an okay that we can introduce the product. What it means is uh, there is a certain. Uh, niche uh, within the economy that would want to go into that and would want to capture them 
and ensure that we provide them. What it means is uh, no interest is going to be charged on any product uh, that we're going to offer, but instead there will be some kind of you know, sharing arrangement in terms of the profits that will arise from there. And uh, you know, that's the way it, it, it is going to operate. We are going to um, uh, ensure that the, you know, our other programs that we have already started are continuing. For example, the startup, um, the, the the graduate startup capital, uh, startup uh, capital that we give to you know the different uh, 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 groups of uh, students who are also going to do all that. As you are aware, uh, because of the economic uh, 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 downturn that the country is going through. A lot of businesses are also having problems. Uh, so, for example, those that were given some credit facilities, you find that uh, they are finding it difficult to to pay. So that's a credit risk. So what we're saying is, going forward, we we'll try as much as possible to ensure that we only do very enhanced uh, analysis of um, uh, any application. And once we are satisfied that it is a credit worthy, then you know we provide the loan. This is going to run as a window, so it will be separate from uh, the normal conventional banking. Uh, and as such, um, we are talking of you know having a window whereby we are going to offer these uh, products. Uh, initially, what we intend to do is to offer just one or two products, depending on the performance of those products. Then we can you know uh, bring in uh, the rest of uh, uh, the products that are. And, uh, you know. uh, we have noted that Likoma Island is one of the uh, islands where there is no bank and uh, uh, y you may wish to recall that you know, most of the MPs uh, coming from that side have been asking for this uh, but uh, nobody has really uh, made an effort to be there. We will be the first ones, we have already identified the premises and from that we intend to start you know, operating within the year as well. Now, in other business news, Sunbet Sako has set an ambitious growth plan for profitability and clientele base going forward. This was said at the annual general meeting the Sako hosted in Blanta recently. We have the details in this report. Speaking at the Sako's annual general meeting AGM recently, Sunbird Sako general manager Sharon Kalea said the Sako has deployed efforts towards continued growth of membership and asset base. Um, we fared very well. Um, because uh, we've made a profit of uh, 60 million. Um, you know, where we're coming from uh, in 2021, we made a profit of 32. And uh, to us, uh, making 60 million as at 2022, it's a great improvement. And it shows that um, the circle is uh, performing well. Guest of honor at the AGM, local business person and motivation speaker, Kondwa Nichira, commended SACO for the positive strides recorded. He challenged members of the SACO to get involved in the growth trajectory. My message specifically is about um, wealth creation. Um, first of all, we have SACOs in Malawi, and Sunbound is one of the SACOs that was established some time back. And then they have maintained the focus, they're still expanding. You can even appreciate that they have made even profits this year. So my message was specifically encouraging shareholders to also start recruiting others. They should not only wait for secretariat. For secretariat, you know, most of the times in Malawi, one of the challenges that we have is we don't like working. Each time we come together for one particular vision, we let one arm, the secretariat, only to work, and it we are shareholders. If I'm a shareholder, what does it mean? It means I'm the owner of the firm. So I should also take part in recruiting. I should also spread message. I should also have interest to appreciate how things are moving in my firm. And not only expect profits without work. So we all have to work uh, so that profits will increase. That's the first one. Secondly, it's about um, um, credit management. We need to train uh, uh, people who access loan in credit management. Uh, how do I use uh, 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 borrowed money? What happens sometimes if you, if you borrow money and business does not go the way you planned, what are you supposed to do? All, all these are issues that are, that are captured in credit management and it is important that we take them through. Issues of loan restructuring, um, um, talk about um, default, the effects of default. 
Okay, so we need to ensure that uh, we're also training Malawians um, uh, to be good borrowers. Finally, we are also looking at innovation. Uh, this time we want to grow and we are growing, expanding. It also calls for, uh, for innovation such as um, um, uh, apps. Why not a Sunbelt Circle app? Okay, why not the new methods of transactions the way other uh, uh, companies are doing? So we also need to explore uh, and ensure that um, uh, we build our technology within our setup. Circle play a very important role in wealth creation. Um, and I would say that is the best platform an entrepreneur would easily save, plan, and invest. The reason is um, it allows you to save at the same time uh, attain profits by the end of the day. You don't only save. Apart from having access to loan, you also have uh, um, an opportunity to share knowledge and skills within the membership. To an entrepreneur, it is also a big platform because it offers you an opportunity to own the entity. So you don't only save, in fact, you are the owner, you become the owner of that entity. So that's a great privilege. What does this mean? The more we grow circles, the more financially independent Malawians will be. Malawi Union of Savings and Credit Cooperatives Regional Coordinator for the South, Antoni Maguluni, said amid economic challenges that affected almost all sectors of the economy, the circle remained resilient. Insert. That story also brings us to the end of today's edition of the program Business Time, a magazine program in which we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. On behalf of the entire production team, my name is William Kumwembe. Stay safe, but always remember, if it doesn't make money, then it doesn't make sense. Bye for now. <laughs>